welcome you all to the last word, the panel discussion on the Engineer 07. This panel discussion is rooted very essentially in last year's panel discussion, the topic for which was vision for education. Every panelist that day said that social issues cannot be separated from a technical education. That was the message of last year's discussion. So this year in engineer, socially conscious engineering has been a very important theme running through all the days of this festival. We have called rural innovators from various parts of Karnataka. We have interacted with them, seen their innovations. We have had Dr. Anil K. Gupta talk to us about National Innovation Foundation. We have had an exhibition by an NGO from Pune called Arti, which does work in rural areas. We have done some things to improve our awareness and to inculcate an attitude towards society that will improve the situation. But this is what happened day before yesterday. Mr. Anna Sahib Udgavi, who, had, who is 80 years old, uneducated from a small village in Belgaon, who has two patents to his name and many, many inventions, we are talking to him, some three, four of us, and he asked me, I want to meet some students from your college who have done something new. He said, I want to meet and see what your students have done, the innovations that you, that you do in your college, what inventions that, have, that the students of this college have come up with. And it was very embarrassing because there were three, four of us, we asked around, we spoke to people. And the fact of the matter is that we don't do anything new. There are no inventions that, or innovations or anything that we can show to the world and say, in the last four years of his life in NITK, so and so did this. All we get is a grade sheet and nothing else. So obviously something is wrong somewhere. A lot of public money is spent on educating us and today the panel will discuss if the education system that we are all a part of and many of us are proud of justifies the expenditure on it. Has it reached its potential? Has it fulfilled its objectives? So the topic for today's discussion is public funding of higher education and its relevance to society. We have assembled a very, very eminent and august panel before you. We hope that at the end of this discussion, all of us will have learned something, all of us will have realized, or all of us, our college as a whole, will take some pointers from what they have to say and do something to fundamentally change the perceived, in the perception of the common man, the perceived uselessness of elite institutions of higher education in our, in our country. I'll introduce to you the panel. We have, chairing the panel, Professor D.B. Fatak. He's the former head of department of computer science, IIT Bombay. He's the head of the Kanwal Reiki School of Information Technology. Okay, Professor D.B. Fatak, yeah, Professor D.B. Fatak from IIT Bombay, Kanwal Reiki School of Information Technology. Please welcome him on, welcome him on to the stage. <laughs> Professor Anil K. Gupta, IIM Ahmedabad, founder of National Innovation Foundation. Please give him a big hand. Professor G.D. Yadav, Head of Department Chemical Engineering, UDCT Bombay, holder of 19 patents, member of the Royal Society of Chemistry. Please give him a big hand. <laughs> Dr. R.R. Sonde, Executive Chairman, NTPC, an alumnus of this college. Please give him a big hand. <laughs> Mr. Arun Ramu, Vice President Infosys, also an alumnus of this college, please welcome him. <laughs> Mr. Suhas Gopinath, a student like you and me and also a millionaire, please welcome him onto the stage. <laughs> and our very own Dr. P. Subhanabhat, Professor, ENC Department, well loved by the students.
Please give him a big hand and welcome him onto the stage. Um, as you all know, uh, prior to the discussion, we had conducted a survey among all students of the college. All of you received a questionnaire. And 499 people, almost 500 people, returned their questionnaires. And the results of that survey have been given to all the panelists and they will be put up on the presentation over there. So please take a look at them. They give several indications as to what our college feels about the topic. And um, without further ado, I hand over the mic to Professor D.B. Fatak for the discussion. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon and welcome to this panel. I am delighted to lead the panel of such a distinguished set of people. Uh, there are some very interesting questions and I am amazed at the uh, collection of information that you people have done, which means that not only you are aware of the spending that goes on into education in general and higher education in particular, but you are keenly interested in debating the relevance of all such funding. The format that we decided to conduct this panel in was to request each of the panelists to initiate his own ideas for about five minutes and then we will throw open the whole panel for questions. I hope there will be a very lively debate. We unfortunately have a time restriction. Most of the colleagues here have to take the flight uh, back today. Uh, Dr. Sonde has to leave at 2.45 sharp. Others have to leave at 3 o'clock sharp. But the chairman and hopefully Professor Bhatt would continue to be available if there is still an enthusiastic set of questions <laughs> after that. <laughs> uh, so let me begin the proceedings by requesting Dr. Sonde, on what he thinks about higher education, particularly basic engineering education and research. Dr. Sonde. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you for giving me this first opportunity. Hi, good afternoon to all of you. Post lunch is usually on a Sunday, is a very, very difficult session, you know. <laughs> and to keep you awake for the next one and a half years, I hope we'll try to do our best. And uh, I must really thank the organizers. I have a very nostalgic feeling when I come and sit here and talk. It's almost 27 years that I have passed out of this Augusta institution. And uh, I feel very proud. I feel very proud that I belong to this great institution, which is making tremendous strides. And, uh, and I would like to see it the day this becomes one of the one of the world-famous institutions, because that's very important. And what is this world-famous institution where, you know, we have people who think in a manner which is very different than the conventional way all of us have been thinking. The problem actually is, begins not at the higher education level. The problem begins at the school education, at, at the primary education. The whole way it has been structured in India and I had an occasion to see some of the other structures globally, is that we have structured our education in a manner of, uh, of uh, what should I say, that's cramming and trying to work in a particular set of format, which by very nature kills our innovation and creativity. So it begins, it is not our fault that we are not able to get any innovative and creative ideas because we have been fed with this 